Welcome back, my evil mausoleum-looking mofos! It's SJB here. Today we're talking about the Grim Wraiths. So this is the uh, uh, last tower you unlock in the game. It's really weird. It's not complicated, but it's goofy complicated. It's like, okay, do we want that to happen? We just kind of just let it happen. So, uh, first of all, according to this, attack is very low, but not the lowest in the game. I and mean, We got lower, lower guys for the Paladin Covenant. Um, Health-wise, it's pretty reasonable, and armor-wise, it's actually pretty high. We've got two out of three armor when we get up uh, our upgrades. We got the Undying Dread. Uh, we do true damage uh, when we die, though. When we die, we do true damage, and we also reduce its speed and having its attack. So, uh, if you have more units kind of grouped together here, this is really going to work well, because you can just fling yourself into the Oblivion, let another guy come in his place, and, uh, you know, they're going to be weaker against them. And then in addition, we got the Soul Siphoning, which, which rates deal 50% extra damage after spending 5 seconds in combat. And we go 50, 75, and 100% here. So let's jump into the game and I'll truly show them off in the, all of their mighty glory. So even as, as a base tower, they've got this really cool ability that you have to know about. All right, you, you have to know that you can move them anywhere on the screen. That is one thing that is just cool about them. If you bring them on your team, you don't have to sell a tower. You can just move it around and do what you want to with this thing. So you have to keep in mind that this is not only for this to be moved. This is for any other tower in the entire game to be moved. So if we have a Dwarven Flame Spitter here, and we're like, oh, crap, I got him up to freaking max level here, but he's in a garbage spot for right now. I don't want him here. I need him to move him somewhere else. You know, there's guys in the very back of the map here. We're going to swap him around. We're going to go like this. We're going to move it over here right away. Within a quick second here, we're going to pop this guy around, and we're going to put the Dwarven Flame Spitter in the back of the map. It took us a quick second a tiny bit of micro it's one of the coolest aspects of this tower in its entirety you gotta give it some points for being able to do that just straight up you gotta give it some points so we're gonna get our money back here and uh we're gonna rebuy a uh wraith and we're gonna look at his health real quick very low no, almost no health but some armor low attack lowish attack but not ridiculously low um as we level up a little bit we're gonna get a little more health uh, up to 83, 11 to 17, 2 armor at level 3, and we get to level 4, the max level, we get 110 health, 17 to 26 damage, and then again, still 2 armor. So are we going to die? Yeah, we're still going to probably end up dying, only 110 health. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys coming out are going to have 600, 300, so like, uh, yeah, they're of course, they're, they're going to die. If you're going to get the Grim Rates, you're probably going to go for a, a couple doses of them. Uh, you're probably going to end up getting them with possible other barracks units nearby as well to help block even further, and then of course, some sort of good group damage flame spitters or tri cannons or whatever you need to make sure that you're going to actually end up utilizing these guys properly so here's the cool thing soul siphoning extra damage after spending five seconds in combat this is probably one of the necessities here but the weird thing about it is of course the job of this side is to let them die the job of this side is to have them fight as long as you possibly can so we can double our damage <laughs> or 50 percent more 75 percent more and double their damage so it's weird to know that that's a thing because eventually they're going to die and then they're going to have to be reset and we're going to have to send them back into the uh, uh, fold here without that five seconds of extra attacking damage. Um, when they die, though, we do want them to do this extra stuff here, I think. We're going to do 60 damage, 120 damage, and then 180 damage, and again, reducing its speed and having its attack uh, uh, for this stuff. This is all for the true damage of when they die. I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it. I feel like it's not quite strong enough because we're not having this happen all that often. Guys are not just <laughs> flinging themselves and dying instantaneously. Like, they're going to fight for a good 5-10 seconds. They can also, I guess, get eaten, which just stops that from happening entirely, which is kind of terrible. And uh, this is probably one of the worst upgrades in the game, if you ask me. I don't know. It just, it just feels wrong to use it. It's not like it actually is absolutely horrifically awful. It just feels feels wrong more than anything. Um, any which way, they have a lot of cool aspects to them. I would just probably not go for fourth tiers and actually upgrade them all the way. I would probably go for a couple first, second, or third tiers. Just kind of spam them a little bit where you need them. Use the move them around uh, ability here to get them uh, to where they need to be. Solve them in front of your heroes, in front of artillery towers, and all that fun stuff, and you're going to be having a grand old time here. Um, I don't have much else to say about them. I don't think they're bad. Uh, I don't really feel like I'm going to be utilizing them that much into my gameplay, but I can see how a lot of people could use them in their gameplay. So, uh, I feel like they're fair. I feel like they're a very fair part of the, part of the game here. I'm just going to call them pretty average. They're pretty average as far as I'm concerned. So if you really love these guys, and you feel like they're one of the best towers in the game, you can completely disagree with me and, and obliterate me in the comments below. But if you think that I'm uh, about right, that they're fairly usable, but not great in any way, shape, or form, and of course you need them in some uh, specific weird situations, like, yeah, of course, they're still usable and not bad. But I'm just going to give them a solid old five. 
I feel like they're fair. I feel like they're reasonable. I feel like they're balanced-ish, but I, they're not my cup of tea in most situations. So, uh, again, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, if you enjoyed, press the like button, subscribe, and have a super-duper delicious day.